People claim that video games are actually good for your brain. However, this could not be further from the truth. Gaming actually holds shocking effects on your brain's health. And it's worse than you think it is, trust me. Because people often pretend that gaming is good for you because they play it and they assume it's good for you, right? However, I did a load of research, like a lot of research, but what I found out was truly shocking. So in today's video, we're gonna explain why gaming is bad for your brain. And there are three notable effects that you want to list down here that you wanna keep note of because these three effects are very important for your mind's health. And by the way, one of these points directly disproves an argument gamers use in favor of gaming. So stay tuned till the end of the video. But before we get onto that, I want to show you my experience with gaming. So let me show you something. So I used to play games a lot, okay? And here's proof. You see this over here? This is my computer and that is my script. I got this computer four years ago and I used to game on it 24 seven, I kid you not. I used to basically wake up, right? I'd wake up and I'd instantly go on that thing and just game. And I'd be so tired and unpresent throughout the rest of the day because of this. And I had a lot of brain fog because I was just getting up and gaming every morning. And I think you can relate. A lot of modern people have brain fog. But when I stopped gaming as much, then I eventually quit this year. I started to feel more awake than ever, right? My cognitive abilities just became so much better. And now I'm able to focus more on my goals now because I don't have a game bothering me <laughs> in my mind, you know? So if gaming is bad for your brain, then what exactly does it do to your brain? One 1998 study showed that video games raised level of dopamine in the brain by about 100%, roughly the same increase triggered by sense. This study outlined a massive problem with video gaming, which you'll be surprised by how much this factor alone affects your brain, right? What if I told you that because of this, video games shrink a part of your brain, right? Like it literally shrinks. So there's this part of your brain called the prefrontal cortex, right? Basically, the prefrontal cortex regulates your cognitive abilities, it regulates your logical thinking, your rationality, and it basically just keeps you focused, right? And now there's this thing called gray matter, right? Gray matter accumulates in different parts of the brain, you know? And more gray matter in that part of the brain, the more the brain will function better. So when you game, you're having that dopamine effect, right? You're basically experiencing that dopamine hit. Once it goes below baseline and the baseline decreases what that will cause is that the gray matter in your prefrontal cortex will disintegrate it will decrease and thus your brain your prefrontal cortex just shrinks now don't freak out okay don't freak out this can easily be fixed okay i'll give you a quick solution avoid gaming meditate but doesn't that terrify you in a sense that gaming will decrease your prefrontal cortex in size so what does this do to your cognitive functioning because we do know that prefrontal cortex helps you cognitively right it makes focusing so much harder that is something i noticed when i stopped gaming and it also does something that will really surprise you but that's going to be at the end of the video so stay tuned and there is this common argument that people use to defend gaming right people often say that gaming helps with depression right and you know that makes sense because escapes help you forget about it for the moment. However, what if I told you that by doing this, just like any other escape mechanism, you're making your depression worse. Video game addiction has been found to be related to personality traits such as low self-esteem, anxiety, and depression. Now notice how I blurred out some of those traits on the image, right? That is because those will be discussed later. Of course, video games don't actively cause depression. You can't just play one game of Call of Duty and then you're like, oh, I'm depressed after that one. No, this is how it works. What it does instead is that it makes the symptoms worse. Because like how I said, your prefrontal cortex goes down and your depression goes up. And to further prove this, right, a study conducted in 2011, 3,034 children from Singapore in grades three, four, seven, and eight were studied for two years and they played games on a weekly basis. The study found a very interesting effect that had taken place. Gaming directly increased depressive symptoms and anxiety, according to this longitudinal study. These kids were playing games every week and yet they gained depressive symptoms and anxiety. <sighs> So why do people think that gaming has a positive effect on your depression? Well, it's an escape mechanism and how escape mechanisms work. So let's say someone's depressed and they're gaming every day. They get depressed, they game, and they're depressed again, but it's even worse this time. So it ends up hitting harder than usual. So what ends up happening because of this, it creates this cycle, right? This negative cycle where you're depressed, you play games, like how I said. And I can tell you from a personal experience, this is actually true. I used to be pretty unhappy all the time, very sad. and 
gaming only made it worse. So gaming obviously has a very negative impact on your mood, right? However, it gets worse. You know how I was blowing up the other traits earlier from that paragraph? Well, here is the first one. 500 men were gathered ages ranging 12 to 18. They were researched in a correlational study. The study itself found that people who had a gaming addiction also had worse emotional intelligence than the average male at their age. Think about that. You, as a gamer, currently have the worst emotional regulation because of your habit. You can't control your emotions because of this, because you do it every day. Now that's the first trait blurred out. What about the second one? Well, this trait is extremely important, so listen closely. Gaming disorder symptoms were significantly correlated with depression and interpersonal relationship problems. However, there was a significant relationship between gaming disorder symptoms and impulsivity. Only in the gaming disorder group, specifically gaming disorder symptoms were related to cognitive impulsivity. This was done by a study which was done in Korea during March 2018. Gaming directly causes impulsivity. This is directly because like how I said earlier, right? When you game, your dopamine spike hits and lets your prefrontal cortex decreases. And as a result, you lose self-control. In fact, all of this, all these traits are tied to the gray matter in your brain. If you have less gray matter in the prefrontal cortex, the stronger these symptoms will be. So I'm going to quickly relay ways you can reverse this problem if you're basically scared, you know? So you want to meditate every morning and it's always the morning, okay? The morning is the most precious part of the day when it comes to your brain. So meditate in the morning, do a focus exercise after that. And then basically you want to cut out all of your bad habits. And if you want to still game, that's fine. Just don't do it as much, okay? Do it in moderation. But I would recommend not gaming at all, and especially not gaming in the morning. And of course, I don't game anymore. And by doing this, you're repairing your prefrontal cortex and giving it more strength, more gray matter. Keep never quitting.